So thanks for inviting me to read and for being part of the Ancient Mariner community. Like Coolridge, I'm a romantic and I write in lyrical ballad style while remaining true to my experimental roots. Of late, I'm obsessed with nostalgia, physicality, and post-breakup narratives. So here I go. Speak a little loud. Oh, can you hear me? No. no. Oh, no. Wow. Hear me now? Yes. Me and Kathleen that summer. We watched Bewitched in the cozy cavernous safety of your pale yellow bedroom and cried over Gladys Kravitz's role as a laughing stock. We were broken hearted over Gladys. She saw things as they really were. As solace we'd gorge on mounds of macaroni and cheese, hostess snowballs and movie sized boxes of goobers which went right to our thighs. They were colossal that summer, as huge as our friendship, massive battleships of empathy and tenderness. The charming bully on our block who once punched me in the head so hard I saw stars called us brick shit horses. He meant houses, brick shit houses. We saw things as they really were. The excruciating promise of exchange there is no letter to open, nor there is no letter to open, no heart-rending script or post-missive invoking niceties any fool might understand. There is no poignant notelet or bastard type followed by instructions, make a sharp left, turn there, it's just past the shell station where you'll see a girl hyperventilating under a haystack. There are no magic charts or bookmarks, no royal alphabets or promised lands, only footnoters injecting explanations, pencil abusers stealing from you gradually, then suddenly, like Colombian gunpowder, like Chinese snow, like the friend of a friend's friend from out of town who hangs around too long. He had fallen in love. They met in front of Bernini's Ecstasy of St. Teresa, an angel in bodily form. Her name is Sally, like Sally Tomato. I drew a breath so hard it made me moan. I envisioned her prone, wildly struggling, hands behind her back, while one of Kaiser Sozi's henchmen leisurely eliminated her. <laughs> Once I read his fey agonizing ballads with all the fervor I could muster. Once we sang Fred Rogers songs. It's you I like, every part of you your skin, your eyes, your feelings. Recently I met someone I really liked but was so anxious I got plastered and told him to go to AAA, confusing the acronyms. <laughs> Although I detest those 12 strip programs where you were meant to believe your personality is a character flaw. Any sweater you find on the shelf is yours to wear that day. Communal life means everything belongs to everybody, like your brush is not your brush, your cup is not your cup, your boyfriend is not yours, but everybody's. Upon leaving the commune, I dismissed this philosophy, which lent a festive feeling to my newfound freedom. I discovered I liked owning stuff. A distressed lover came over to cry and complain. He had a rifle and shot a hole through the wall. It was exhilarating. He came back the next day to patch up the wooden complain more. It was greatly disappointing. <laughs> to keep things on edge, I self-styled tasks according to my recently discovered authority by designated books and movies with come-hither labels. Mary Poppins set me on fire. Andy of Mayberry was blood-curdling. I'd hide them in indiscriminate places because I delighted in the negation of externally imposed restraints and the sensation of blind hysteria when I found them. You are a sunflower in a lighthouse. At permanent ink to gain a thought sorry. At permanent ink to gain authorship over your body because you are terrified that a rainbow is just a problem in optics. A poem just stands out of structure and a cherry blossom tinged with the palest pink is just propaganda to erase sentimentality. And this is freaking you out. Hold persistent ideas about shoes that must look a specific way. With laces you'll never trip over. 
believe you won't always look this way, feel this way, walk this way, or be protected by that homeowner's insurance you just signed up for because you actually trust Nationwide is on your side and liberty is mutual. Know that that lobotomy they keep threatening to give you will not resolve or protect you from OCD that makes you check your face a thousand times a day because you can't figure out if you're really, really beautiful or really, really ugly. Packing for a trip to the rocky coastline. Suicidal ideations, check. Primary support systems, must inquire what was that wretched woman's phone number. DNR note, check, got it. High on the high continuum of dementia precox, noted. It's in there somewhere, I think. Maybe not, can't remember. Sounds shape, expanding deliberate incongruity, right, check. What did you just say? Jawbreakers, damn my molars. I'm on it. Floss, the enchanting dental assistant at Dr. Levy's likes translucent frost, but I prefer Tom's naturally waxed. It's from Maine. How I love Maine. It's the only state in the United States that has one syllable, and the honeybee is the official insect. Well, let's get on with it. The super shuttle will be here any minute now. <coughs> Had a few more. Memories like the crusty surface of my mind. The silly lies we told to defend our dignity. The trinkets that meant nothing. Painted wooden dolls, one hidden inside the other. The scabs you compulsively picked, like grody constellations. Clusters of fixed stars, an assemblage of ossified meteors. It felt so good. How could it be wrong? Enhanced hostility. She shines in an advanced way and holds up her end of the conversation, neatly arranged in a solitary whirl, dismantling as you hold her, sweating blood and soft feelings. This leads to improved aggression, a black eye, smashed ribs, rug burns, an array of florets arranged in a violet spiral, circling the limits of her cautious urgency. Where you see the white of the paper. The only reason I'm being so critical is because you asked me to. I do like your poem, though. I mean, water is water, whether it's a stream or blood or those pissing boys on the fountains in France. Though I fell in love with the idea of resistance, like an acrylic window or gouache. He was praying and I just happened to be there. I'm not going to read that one. Sorry. <laughs> Here we go, on to the next. Are those your drawings on the cover? Oh, here we go. Get his attention even if he's ignoring you. One. Go to his place and buzz his doorbell. When he doesn't answer, wait. Bring a book or two challenging ones like Gravity's Rainbow or The Sound and the Fury. You'll need them. You're on the long grift. Two. Don't drink any water so you'll get lightheaded and hopefully pass out. But before you do, write his name and phone number on a sheet of paper and pin it to your coat as your emergency contact. <laughs> if you don't have any paper, just rip off a section of the brown cellulose pulp crumpled at the bottom of your backpack, the one with the ancient pretzel in it. Three. When he finally leaves his house and trips over your splayed body, Regain consciousness and tell him how special he is. Four, write a poem about him and read it at every open mic in the neighborhood. <laughs> write a play about him that will get turned into a movie. Leave long, agonizing messages on his voicemail. Follow his ex-wife on Facebook. <laughs> Call his parents identifying yourself as a psychiatrist and say you're concerned he suffers from megalomania. Five. Start dressing like him, talking like him, realize you want to be him, realize good grief you are him, and let this be the dawn of an old era. Annihilator. It wasn't your fault, just something you did over and over and laughed about later like an open assortment of conversation hearts. Call me, kiss me, ask me, adore me. 
Doe-eyed casualties with dreams of blushing bride, nail lacquer, and bleeding ulcers wept. As self-conscious waitresses gave testimony, branches of flower heads bending downward, asteroids flying in and out of the back of their heads. Still, no one blamed you. It wasn't your responsibility. Just something you did over and over and cried about later, scrubbing and scrubbing the chronic pit stains from your favorite area man t-shirt until it was ripped to shreds while you grabbed at its edges, fingers saturated, blood vessels constricting, nodding daffodils. This was not your fault, just something you did. And about three more. Yeah, we're good. Got four minutes. Oh, cool, okay. Keep rolling. All right. What a pretty note this is. Stashes of irresistibly deranged poems composed in my best moments, never meant to be sent, but sent anyway. What did I say to so many people? Dear people, you just passed me in the library. I leaned in and cut my hands to cover up what I was writing as if you could see from five feet away. It said, I must stop sweating myself. It said, I must stop sweating myself. It said, I must stop sweating myself. It said, because I'm not all that. Can't even find my glasses on Monday morning for 40 minutes. Dear people, look at how interesting I am distracted on meds, doing what I want to do one thing at a time. Always the wrong thing first because that keeps things moving. I like to get dressed and take a warm bath, play Scrabble with my back to the board, and break up. I mean lose it, go to pieces, go bonkers, crumble before I get the chance to like someone I could really like. Dear people, Today a certain person about town said the profit of your experience, but in a contentious way that satisfied your hundred thousand staggering directions. You felt ashamed and entitled. This made you sick, but you liked it. You liked it so much you even liked it. Dear people, choice is irrational. These are unhinged texts sound by these are unhinged texts sent by mistake. Like the one I just left you about needing a pacifier and seeing my therapist twice a week because he was sure I was going to destroy myself. He just left a voicemail from an unidentified number and shouted, why, why? And I was like, this is stellar. This is the best voicemail I've ever received. I saved it so you can hear it. <laughs> he called back to apologize and say he wasn't shouting at me, but at a driver who almost ran into him at a crosswalk. I don't know if he was making it up. Shall we share the punchline? These are just the annotations. <laughs> From this book. Why not? Unnup unnuptials and autistic thinking. Why not have a wedding so safe only one of you attends? <laughs> <laughs> On transcendence. Why not make yourself into something else from tubular to blow, hollow to barely discernible? On www.newyorklottery.newyork.gov, you are not a winner, Terminal 07839248, and you'll definitely keep losing, so why not keep deluding yourself on being loud? Everyone can hear you, it's irritating. Unless you are officially deaf and can't discern your own voice, why not consult a white cat with blue eyes? On death with dignity, why not vigorously stab yourself in the chest, either that or stub your toe in the same place like 20 times in a row? <laughs> I have one more for my chapbook. I don't know if oh, we have time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Quick. This is my last chapbook. Okay. Um, it's called Dear Friend. Okay. 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 I can't tolerate her huckleberry warmth and that she piles on the mascara to draw attention to her eyes. And troubled, she flosses in the living room and spend hours envisioning where the particles of rank debris once expelled have landed and lie buttressing. I'm concerned by her idolization of Leonard Cohen, the impassioned way she speaks of Leonard Cohen, though Leonard Cohen is not her friend, and she has never met Leonard Cohen, Leonard Cohen, Leonard Cohen. I'm gravely annoyed by the glacial speed with which she drives her potlucks and boggle parties, her crystal-loving ointment anointing and truth-questing via getting into the whirlpool. I must thank her for lending me all that money, though. I will not be paying her back because 
Her gratitude would be excruciating. 